today I would like to take a look with you at something called nerve flossing and find out what it actually is and how we can use it to progress on our flexibility journey. Firstly, we're going to have a look at nerves in general. Then we will check out those peripheral nerves that are actually relevant for our flexibility. And then we also have a look at a nerve flossing exercise and well, give it just a go. So we're going to do like a little test position, do the exercise and then see how the test position feels after doing such exercise. Let's get straight into it. So the nerves in our bodies are actually part of a really complex system. And those nerves are kind of like branching out like trees all throughout the bodies. And that way they are connected to, for example, our skin, our muscles, and also connective tissues. So that way we can imagine the nerves to be like the connection between our brain and body. This means that like anything that happens to our body is communicated to our brain. And also if the brain wants us to do something, this is communicated throughout those nerves. So an example for this could be, we are lying outside in the sun and the sun is shining on our skin, making it heat up nicely. So now because the nerves are connected to our skin, they can communicate that the skin is getting hot because of the sun to our brain. It can also work the other way around. So for example, if we want to move a muscle, we are sending signals from the brain to that muscle to be moved. And these signals are transmitted over those nerves. So in our body, we have the central nervous system, which is basically our brain and also the spinal cord. And then we also have the peripheral nervous system, which is all the nerves that are actually going away from our spine into our limbs, so like our arm and our legs. So these peripheral nerves in our arms and legs, they are actually in charge of sending all those signals from those areas to our central nervous system. But relevant for us today are the sciatic nerve, the median nerve, and also the femoral nerve. So let's just keep it simple. The sciatic nerve, it actually starts around the lower back area here, and then it runs all along the back of our legs and at the knee it divides up running all the way down so that way it is responsible for certain moves here as well so for example the extension of the hip or the knee flexion and also the flexion of the foot because this nerve runs along the back of our leg it is actually important for our front splits because this is where for example the hamstring area is that is really essential to the front splits. The second nerve is the median nerve, which actually starts around here at the shoulder area and it runs all the way along our arm to those three little fingers here. That way it is responsible for like our wrist flexion and also anything going on with those three little fingers here. And because the nerve starts all the way up here, any tension in it might as well limit our range of motion in, for example, shoulder stretches like this. So where our arms go up and overhead which is also important for bridges and that as well. The third nerve is the femoral nerve, which is starting at our pelvis and then running on the front of our thighs. So this is why it's responsible for the hip and the thigh area here. This nerve actually takes care of hip flexion. So when I'm bending at my hip or also knee extension. So when I'm straightening the leg. Other movements that the femoral nerve is kind of responsible for is abduction and also external rotation. Because it's responsible of the hip and thigh area, this might actually help us out with a lot of like middle splits exercises as well. So just an easy way to distinguish the sciatic and the femoral nerve, so the first and the third nerve, both of those that are running in the legs that I was talking about, is to just think about, okay, where is that nerve? So if we know, for example, that the sciatic nerve is running on the back and then we are bending the knee like this, so this is like a knee flexion, something in the back is happening, that's what we can just imagine, which is why it's the sciatic nerve that is responsible there. And then when we extend it, we can kind of, we're bringing it forward so we can think about something happening on the front of our legs, so that's why it's the femoral nerve there. And then with the hip flexion and extension, it's the same, so when we are flexing, we are flexing forward, like there's movement going forwards which is why it's the femoral nerve. And then when we are go going backwards, so extending the hips, then it's actually the opposite. So it's the sciatic nerve again, because we're bringing the body further to the back. So this is just a way for me to remember it. And well, I think it kind of makes sense. So why does all of this matter now? So really often people are concerned about muscles and joints, trying to mobilize them the whole time, but then they completely forget about the nerves being there as well. 
And in the end, it could actually be that tension in the nerve is going to limit your range of motion for certain motions as well. So it doesn't really have to be a tight muscle. Sometimes something can feel like a tight muscle, but it's actually more so tension in the nerve which is kind of just giving you that feeling. So the muscle is actually okay, it's just that nerve tension that we have to get rid of to be able to access that full range of motion. So for example, as with the sciatic nerve, which runs along the back, the hamstrings are really important for our front splits, but if it feels like our front splits are really tight and don't want to elongate, and we've been stretching and stretching and nothing really helps, it might actually be that we have some nerve tension there. So what can we do to relieve this nerve of tension? Well, the answer is nerve flossing exercises. So nerve flossing exercises are exercises that take uh, the body through a specific range of motion. And in most moves, they are basically putting that nerve under tension and then releasing this tension on one end of the nerve. So in the end, with those nerve flossing exercises, we can get rid of the tension in the nerves and that way decrease pain or discomfort and also increase our range of motion. Just always remember, nerve flossing should not be painful, so you shouldn't really be feeling any extreme pain. And also, you should always be breathing nice and relaxed throughout nerve flossing exercises. Because I really, really like working on my middle splits, and I might actually just continue after this, uh, we are just going to take a look at a nerve flossing exercise for the nerve that is responsible for a lot of, uh, well, exercises and positions uh, that are related to middle splits. For this, we wanna hop on our knees and our hands. Alrighty, so we're on our hands and knees here, and all we wanna be doing is lifting this leg to the side. So we're lifting it up and back down, up and back down. We wanna do this five times. So just make sure that when you're taking your leg up, you're not going into a spinal twist here. So we wanna keep the back nice and flat here the whole time. Try to move it as little as possible with just the legs rising up and down. Up and back and up and down. Two more. And last one. All right. So if in that exercise just then you were lifting up your left leg, you want your left leg to be up for this nerve flossing exercise as well. Placing my hands just at the top of my leg here picking up the other leg and bringing it to the side as I'm looking over my shoulder. So that was number one, and two, and three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And we go for eight more intense ones. One, two, Three, four, really pressing that out. Five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, and of course we can try it out now, doing the left side again. Don't get mixed up with the sides. And we're gonna lift up, and down, and up, and down, up, and down. So what did it feel like? Could you feel any difference between the first exercise and then doing the same exercise on the same leg the second time? Because for me it usually feels like my leg is a lot lighter and like I can lift it up easier and well that way it kind of also feels like it's higher up. I actually never really proved myself doing it so I'll have to check that out later. Um, but yeah, just let me know what it felt like and what you think of this and also remember to do the other side, especially when it helped you. If it didn't, well, this just means that there's nothing wrong with your nerves, that there are like no irritations or no tensions going on in there. So let me know what you think of all of this, like with the nerves and that, how it's connected to your like flexibility training as well, and how it's actually good to have that knowledge. Did you know about it? Didn't you? Is that something new you've heard? I just thought it was so interesting because I never really knew. And that's why I just wanted to share this with you. So of course, there are also heaps of different other nerve flossing exercises even for like the same nerve just different variations of one exercise and that this was just one of them so yeah maybe check them out maybe research it a little as well and yeah include them into your routine if it helps you bye